you're on. Today my text will come out of First John chapter three. And I'll be reading the first few verses out of First John chapter three. As soon as I can get there, that is. <laughs> I, I had it marked, but I guess my bookmark fell out, so. First John, chapter three. <clears throat> Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. I could stop right there, because that's just great. Uh, what better blessing is it than to be called the children of God? Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now are we, we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whosoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whosoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither sin him, seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whosoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he nor is he who does not love his brother. Father, we thank you for your word that gives us a little guidance. I pray that you'll help us to just glean a little more from your word today. Amen. So I wanted to touch on sin. Odd, odd thing for a preacher to do, right? <laughs> uh, it says that if, that if we're saved, we don't sin. But yet, some places in the Bible, it calls us to repent. So, why do we need to repent if we don't sin? Well, um, because we do falter here and there. It's not like we live a perfect life each and every day, every minute of every day. Uh, things turn our heads and we go astray sometimes. Uh, the Bible talks about a sin unto death and a sin not unto death. I know, it's kind of confusion sometimes. Uh, that's why I say, you know, you, you need to, you need to look at what the Bible says because there's, there's you, you just almost know that there has to be more conversation that went on between Jesus and his disciples than what's written in the pages. Uh, they spent three years. So there's got to be a whole lot more conversation that went on. He just kind of give you the highlights there. So the one, the one that sins and continues in sin is the ones it's talking about that says of the devil. Because they're not interested in doing good. They're interested in doing what pleases them gratification right now why wait till tomorrow i want it now uh but tomorrow yesterday you know it cost you more 
because today it was on sale if it had just waited one more day. <laughs> well, we got to have it now. We don't wait. The righteous is the one that tries to do good. And God helps us do good. And yet sometimes, sometimes we want to argue. Uh, James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The problem is, we don't always submit ourselves to God and we want to argue with the devil. It doesn't tell us to argue. It tells us to resist. When Jesus was tempted and led out into the wilderness to be tempted, the devil knows scripture as well as anybody. He knows what's written, and he would tempt Jesus with different things, and Jesus would uh, rebut him with scripture. He resisted the devil. He did not argue with the devil. When the devil's trying to tempt you with something, and then you keep mulling that over in your mind, the book of James says, uh, let no one say, so when we're tempted, we're tempted of, of God, because God don't tempt you. He may try you a little bit. But we're, we're tempted because we're drawn away by our own lust. Ooh, that looks shiny. Let's go over there. <laughs> but the trouble with that is, is when... Uh, that just leads to more things, to sin. And sin brings death, separation from God. That's because we want to argue with the devil instead of resisting. Good grief. Resist. Don't argue. I, and how are you gonna how are you gonna resist unless you you have a, a few scriptures to back you up. Right. Jesus said in, in John chapter 14 that he was the way, the truth, and the life. How you combat deception is with the truth. If the devil can get you to argue, then he moves you off your focal point and he will lead you astray and Pretty soon you'll be a little too close to the edge and quick. Don't argue. Resist. Put up a resistance. Know the truth. No matter what my opinion is, and no matter what my thinking is, the truth is right here. So if my thinking don't align with the truth, I need to change my thinking. I can think the world is flat, but that don't mean it's true. Be like the, the two guys. One was in the hospital, and his buddy went to see him. He says, my goodness, said, uh, uh, you should have helped me out. He said, what do you mean? He says, well, he said, when that arguing with that guy and he told me that he didn't think I could fly and I told him I could, he said, you should have stopped me from jumping out that two-story window. And he said, stop you. He said, I had 20 bucks on you because I thought you could do it. <laughs> Wasn't the truth. What you, what you really need to believe in is the truth. Because it's the truth that sets us free. Yeah. Free from what? Free from sin. Free from deception. How do you gonna how are you gonna know that truth unless you read a little bit? <clears throat> in Second Timothy chapter three, it says in the last days men will be lovers of themselves. And that, that don't mean just men. That means people in general. Lovers of themselves. In, in other words, you know, because the Bible tells us, you know, the, the, the guy asked Jesus, said, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, there's two. He didn't say there's just one, he said there's two. 
He said the first is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. He said, and the second is just about like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on these two commandments hinge all of the things, all the laws and the prophets, that they hinge on these things. Because in, uh, you cannot love your neighbor as yourself until you fulfill that first commandment. Because believe it or not, not everybody's lovable. <laughs> and you can't love yourself without yeah. the first commandment. You, you've got to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. That don't leave much room for anything else. You've got to put him first. Uh, John chapter 15, Jesus told his disciples, he says, I, I'm the vine and you're the branches. And, and without me, you can't do a thing. If you're going to bring forth fruit, you've got to stay connected to the branch, to the vine. And it says that if you can't bear fruit, then you'll be like those branches that are gathered up and thrown into the fire. So we know in the last days that, that people will be lovers of themselves. What's in it for me? I'm not, I'm not going to do anything for you unless, unless I'm, I'm going to get some good out of it. What good do they get out of it? Nothing, because they're not satisfied. Never satisfied. Evil and corruption never satisfies because it's never enough. If you read the book of Proverbs, it talks about that. It tells you that, that no matter how much the greedy person has, it's never enough. One more thing. It's like the guy that says, uh, I don't want to be greedy in land. I, I just want what's mine and what's next to it. It's never enough. But when you have the love of, of God in your heart, now I'm not saying that it's bad to want something better, but not to the point that it separates you from God. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the rest will be added to you. But see, then we get back to arguing with the devil. Because the devil says, oh, you deserve that. You need that. You should have that. God says, no, you're not ready for that. The devil says, yeah, you're ready. So you, you want to start arguing with the devil. First thing you know, he can miss you. You're ready. It leads to trouble. It's like uh, I seen a guy wearing a shirt. And the shirt said, I may not be Mr. Right, but I'm Mr. Right now. And I've got granddaughters. I've got nieces that are young. I don't want them to find Mr. Right now. I want them to find Mr. Right. I want them to wait. Because that's the best. When you get Mr. Right now, that's when you have argued with the devil and he leads you astray. And that usually ends up in a big fat mess. Been down that road a couple of times, know where them potholes are. You can't avoid them. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You do that because you fulfill the first commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. When you fulfill that commandment, then you feel the next one to love your neighbor as yourself. You, you harbor no hard feelings towards anybody. The Lord's Prayer, it says, 
uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Sometimes I wish it said, uh, forgive me my trespasses and, and I'll, I'll work on the rest of that. Because sometimes when people do me wrong, it takes me a little bit to forgive them. I don't have that immediate forgiveness in my heart. When people do things to my family, um, I'm going to retaliate. I don't always have that immediate forgiveness. That's something I have to work on. That's something where you have to seek God so he can help you do that. You can't just, you can't just uh, do that on your own. You have to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul so you'll have enough stuff, the things you need, so you can love your neighbor as yourself because that goes along with forgiveness. And uh, they, they say that you can't harbor uh, animosity towards people because that's letting them rent, live rent free in your, in your head. <clears throat> well, luckily I'm kind of forgetful and I don't remember a whole lot of that stuff. <clears throat> so so I, I kind of think I have, might have the advantage over some people. I don't see how people remember everything there is to worry about, and I'm trying to remember where I put my screwdriver last because so, I need it, and I was just using it. So, For the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to remember not to argue with the devil, but to instead rebuke him to submit to God because if I'm arguing with the devil I've not submitted to God what I've submitted to is the devil because I'm arguing with him I need to submit to God and, and let him take care of the situation Doesn't mean that, doesn't alleviate me taking some kind of action because uh, the book of James tells us that faith without works is dead. So he expects you to do something. But you put that faith, it's like putting your money where your mouth is, you, you put that faith into action of some kind. Doesn't mean you have to wait till they come around the corner and whack them with a crowbar. No. No, it, it means you resist the devil by knowing the scriptures, by standing on the scriptures that he gives you. Otherwise, <clears throat> otherwise you're, you're going to lose the argument. Second uh, Peter <clears throat> Chapter 1 tells us that we should to continue to increase, meaning which goes along with, with uh, John 15, staying in the vine. We need to increase in our walk, our daily walk with God, stay, stay in step with God. You've got to, well, let me see, I can probably read that. <clears throat> If I could find it right quick, or not so quick. It says, <clears throat> it said, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. We're supposed to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. 
Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. So that tells us that we need to walk with God, listen to what he says, let the truth of God come to you so you can resist the devil. By submitting yourself to God, you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. It's all in the Bible. Then you won't be like those people that in the last days are, are just in it for themselves. You'll actually, the Bible doesn't say that you're going to be uh, free of, of all tribulation, of all trials, but it does say that out of them all, Christ will deliver. And it does, Jesus told his disciples, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. The book of Matthew tells us that he will be with us to the end of the age, this age, meaning that if we hold on, that he will be there to guide us through. Doesn't mean that we'll be rich, but we might be rich in mercy, and that's better than money. So we shouldn't argue with the devil, just resist. And you resist him by knowing the truth. Let's pray. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew the stream. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. Father God, I pray that you'll guide us all into your truth, that we might know the truth to set us free, that we might be the people that you have called us to be. You gave, gave us so great a promise to, for the adoption to be called the children of God, that we might be called your children, Lord. Help us to submit to you, resist the devil, and guide us each and every day, Lord, that we might know your will, and I pray for strength that we might do your will. Yeah. For I ask in Christ's name, amen. amen.